Welcome back to 843 TV. We are now joined by Dr. Meredith Cooler, who is the Executive Director of Special Services here at the Jasper County School District. Meredith, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Um, can you uh, tell us how long you've been here with the Jasper County School District? Uh, yeah, actually, um, I've been with the Jasper County School District. It was my first teaching job, actually. Um, I actually have been here a total of 10 years. I spent seven years as a teacher at Ridgeon Elementary, took a bit of a hiatus um, to go to some other districts, and then returned um, three years ago. This is actually my fourth year as the Executive Director of Special Services. Great. And what was your first teaching job? Um, actually, I'm a regular ed teacher usually, okay. but I was a preschool special ed teacher when I first came here. And my threes and four-year-olds were actually housed at the middle school mm -hmm. when we were in Ridgeland, and so that was really odd. Um, I was very fortunate, though. I was right uh, out of school, and I had this wonderful aide. And um, we had children who were not potty trained, and I was right out of school. I hadn't had any children. And she luckily took the diaper changing responsibilities, <laughs> nice. or I probably never would, <laughs> I never would have made it through that first year. So, um, and then I switched, and I, I taught second and third grade, and, uh, and gifted and talented at Ridge Elementary. Okay. Well, Meredith, what are your responsibilities now with the school district? With the school district, I am over special services, which includes all of the children with any kind of disability abilities. We serve um, students ages 3 through 21 within the school district. So we pick up the babies from BabyNet and we serve them all the way until 21 or until they get a high school diploma. Um, that's um, the, the bulk of what I do. Um, in addition to that, I'm also supervised the 504 programs, which is under the American with Disabilities Act. And, um, and I, we have about 25 special ed teachers and about 25 assistants that I am indirectly supervisor of. So you basically touched on some of the services that are being currently offered in your department. What are some additional services? And if I was a parent, how would I go about um, finding out about those services and where would they be in the district? Well, for the most part, everything that we do starts with evaluation. Um, we test kids and determine whether or not they have a disability. Um, everything from what's considered speech-language impairment, which is typically something that um, students, you know, oftentimes exit out of. We also have um, s services for a, a, like a re what we considered a resource placement. We have self-contained placements, and then we have two functional skills classrooms, which are the students that are what used to be called a trainable level um, in terms of their intellect and they learn functional skills rather than academics. They take an alternative test as opposed to the regular state test that we take. Um, as far as parents getting those kinds of services and information, typically it kind of goes through the guidance counselors at each of the school to start the process. We do a referral process and then um, the students are tested and determined whether they're eligible by federal guidelines. So, you know, speaking of parents, um, you know, how, how much of the advancement of the child, you know, you can only do so much at school. So what, what are the parents' responsibilities and what do they need to do to be involved to make sure their kids are doing the best they can do? Um, well, actually, you know, obviously they can work with their students, but the, the obligation is really on the school district to identify. We have a ch what's called a child find obligation. So the obligation is truly on the school district to try to identify. So teachers are going to observe things. They might give suggestions to parents as to how they might improve it. But you know, all in all, if it's a student with a disability, then we're going to pick it up. We're going to start do providing additional services for those students. And I assume you guys kind of span the gamut of special services all the way from something minor like ADD mm -hmm. all the way to you know severe more severe cases of yeah we have um, you know we don't have a lot of the low incidents like right now we don't have a lot of students that are deaf or blind or mm -hmm. things of that nature but we do have students with intellectual disabilities that range from profound and severe we also have mild I mentioned speech is typically a, something that we pick up we find we've got a lot of students um, within this area that just come with really low language when mm -hmm. they come to school maybe because they haven't had exposure or experience prior to coming and so um, we pick up those students those students are typically um, in the uh, least restrictive environment usually get maybe 60 minutes of speech services and then we hope by middle school or so they t tend to exit out. Um, we also pick up students um, that are on the higher end of the spectrum where we'd have to provide more services that mm -hmm. aren't allowed to, you know, that aren't able to be out in the general education curriculum mm -hmm. for as many things. So the English second language falls in your department as well? Um, actually it does not. Okay. It does not. Okay. 
So that's well, Dr. Different. Cooler, um, you alluded a few minutes ago with the students on the higher spectrum. How do you serve the gifted and talented students? Um, that doesn't fall into my department either. That falls into a different department. It's not considered special services. We just deal with the lower end spectrum. Gotcha. And, and Lydia mentioned some uh, recent federal regulations and, and state legislation that's uh, impacted her department. Do you find yourself kind of being uh, directed by uh, mandates set federally or by federal government or state government? Yeah, pretty much everything mm -hmm. I do is mm -hmm. mandated by federal yeah. government mm -hmm. or state government. I mean, and that's where the funding comes from as well. I mean, mm -hmm. we're under the Individuals with Disabilities Act, which was just uh, you know, updated in, well, it was actually 2004, but that's our most recent update. Um, we also find we get uh, a lot of different state regulations. Um, all that's tied into funding. So um, all of our funding comes from either, from, from the federal government. Mm -hmm. So all the additional teachers, additional services are actually provided through that funding. Okay. Um, and is there anything else that you'd like to share with our viewers about your pro uh, program here? At um, one thing is, is this year we're starting a parent initiative and we're trying to get the parents to come in. We're having about once a month, with the exception of December, we're having a parent meeting in the evenings so the parents can come in and learn different things about. We're doing one on ADHD, which mm -hmm. you mentioned earlier. Um, we're doing one on the referral process and how you become get evaluated for special ed. We're also partnering with um, local mental health and seeing if they can come in so that we can make sure that the parents are aware of all of the services that are offered in Jasper County. Great. Well, Dr. Cooler, thank you for joining us on 843 TV. Thank you. And uh, please come back and join us for one more segment of 843 TV.